before I signed my second deal, I had like 300 grand in the bank. If I ain't signed a second deal, I'd be dead broke. My first four years, I made four million, four for four. Four for four. And I had 300,000 left in the bank after them four years. That's not an uncommon story. I had nothing to show for it, though. It was all just hanging out, partying, mm -hmm. spending. Just financial dude called my mama and said, yeah, he spent, um, he withdrew $120,000 between 6 p.m. and 6 a.m. So I was, I was, I was taking out 10 grand, a, 10 grand a month at the strip club. That's crazy, Chan. Yeah. Eight, ATM withdrawals, 120, over $120,000 in a year. All at the strip club. You take two thousand dollars a night, but I was going out. You think about it, ten days or five, five six days, days that yeah. through that month, so you could take out two thousand dollars a night. So every every Friday night, every Saturday night, I was taking out two thousand dollars at the ATM, and so I took out over one hundred twenty thousand dollars between six p.m. and six a.m. My shit had my, my my max is two grand, and I was pitting that on the head. And the strip club, they give you as much money as you can get. What's that? Yeah. Did that ATM give you as much money as you could possibly get? In Tootsie dollars. All of you put they that They charge you 10%? Card. Yeah, hell yeah. yeah. I used to, boy, I used to be in there. He was like, because I, I even, when he said it, when she said it to me, she she was like, yeah, you took you took out over $120,000 at the ATM. I was like, shit, yeah, that's my money. Is somebody knocking? No? No. Okay, that's fine. Hello, Ahmad. Yo, oh, y'all got up, the whole dog? set up. Okay. What's good with you? What's happening with you? Chilling. Good to see you, boy. Right. Yes, sir. Good, bro. Good, good week, baby. Good good to see y'all. What's again. up with you, bro? Hey, Sauce. I ain't even gonna lie, bro. You the first guest ever that I was slightly upset that was on time. That was but, on what? But we was hungry as hell. When? After this meeting, we just went to. And I was like, shoot, Sauce, and you hadn't texted us back, like, text us back what time? I was like, man, Sauce gonna be a little late, man. We might be able to get something to eat. Man. I was like, let me shoot my nah, boy a text. I usually, I usually pull up a little late, but it, it all worked out. You know nah. what I'm saying? I just came straight here. Hold up. Limitless. Take a stomach cap, pin in it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, get me up. Uh, on the mission, get me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. Uh, on the vision, I can trust. Uh, trust. Uh, limitless. Take a stomach cap, pin in it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Uh, way I'm feeling, get me up. Uh, on the mission, get me up. Uh, well, welcome back to the pivot. Yeah. One of our very few repeat guests, uh, Freddie T, Chan. I'm RC. Only repeat guest other than Sauce is Floyd. Floyd, yeah. CJ. Floyd and CJ. Floyd so you're number CJ. three, bro. All you got to right, be doing your right, thing. On, yeah, man. so, so you, here man. is my, uh, my question, bro. Since you are here for your second time, like the show could be totally different. So I want to go back to Lil Sauce, the SoundCloud rapper. Oh, yeah. Can you give us a little bit of what the, uh, what the flow was? It was a little Detroit flow. <laughs> I remember I had got my, uh, my first phone or whatever. You know, I was in... This was an elementary, I believe, but you were still able to like buy beats on your phone. So I had like $3, the beat was like $3. So if you really go in there and like dig deep, I got like five different songs on the same beat. And that's what everybody's talking about. They like, bro, you using the exact same beat, but that's just cause I couldn't really afford it at the time. You know what I'm saying? And when I was in elementary, like everybody rapped. Like we used to be in my basement. I remember my brother used to rap with his friends. They used to be in the basement. He had his little group that he was rapping with. And I was young, and me and my boys were young, and we used to be rapping too. I used the little voice memo thing, so that's what I was recording off of. A lot of people was like, you need to get in the studio again when they, when they like heard the SoundCloud or whatever. But the whole time, I just played a beat and just record off my phone. You know really? what I'm saying? Yeah, so I used to like doing it. It was just, I didn't like have a passion for it. It was just something to do like, if I wasn't playing the game, because I grew up still playing the game, playing football, basketball, sports. But like I still used to just do it just for fun. But if you listen to it, bro, like, and this is this is me with my 44-year-old adult years thinking about like a young kid. Like you actually, like it made sense. Like you yeah. actually had a little flow. No, for sure. It's just one of the things like, I mean, you you can really hear what I'm lying about. Cause I did, I was cap <laughs> I was capping about some of the stuff, but like <laughs> The good thing about it, like, it's the stuff I was rapping about back then, like, it's actually true now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The jury, the clothes, all of that stuff. But, like, some of the stuff that I was saying, it was actually, like, me. It's interesting you bring that up, that the things you rapped about on when you were a SoundCloud rapper are true now. 
Your yeah. goals were recently like released or somebody found them and you posted it. Can you explain or tell me what those three goals you wrote on a piece of paper were before you enrolled? I don't even remember what that paper said. I believe it probably said, um, I don't even remember what it Number said. Number one, because I know, was it 3.0? 3.0, yeah. Yeah. Number two, you wanted to be a great college player. And number three was you wanted to make it to the league and take care of your family. Yeah, for sure. When you so. think about having written those goals before you even entered high school to where you are now, how much did you believe that those goals could come true? Yeah, I always believed that uh, I ain't really had like no big role model who was already like successful, stuff like that, who could just tell me stuff like if you write it down and just tell yourself the same thing that you write down, like your mind gonna train yourself to do whatever you gotta do to line up to those goals. So I feel like I was just wise beyond my years. You know what I'm saying? I just write, write stuff down and be like, you know, this is what I'm gonna do. And my mom, she always like preach school first. And as much as I used to always just have my mind on games and football, it's like, that was like the reality of it. Like you had, you gotta get the school part down. So it's like, if you could be a talented player, cause I, I know all of us, I know we all know some people that was talented, but just couldn't get right. You know what I'm saying? So if you could really get that school part down and just, just lock into that, everything else is gonna take care of itself. So, you know, I made sure I focused on school. Like I went to college, I did my thing three years and I, then I went back, you know, got my diploma or whatever, graduated. Now we here, you know, I'm in the league, being able to take care of my family. You reached all them goals? You yeah. had a 3-0? Yeah. We know was, the other two. Oh, yeah. I, we, the other two oh, is on. Yeah, yeah I'm that, go, that's on way. Okay, yeah. So I'm going to get deeper into it. So like when I was young, like elementary, I always had a 4.0. Middle school, it was dang near the same thing. High school, I used to have like a 3-4, 3-5. College, I used to have a 3-5 three, three, cumulative. Wow. So like I was always smart. Like that was one thing that you couldn't take from me. Like I was always smart no matter what it was in school. If I was outside, like I was always street smart, I was always book smart, I was always like smart all around. Do you still, you still set them goals? Do you still write them down? Like you're saying, it was released, but you still write them goals down every year? Yeah, I always um, have them in my, in my notebook, especially like before each season too, I always write some new goals down. Some of them be the same, because you got to understand like in the league, there's certain things that you can do again, Pro Bowl or Pro. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things I can't do again, rookie of the year, but like I'm always writing goals down. You know what I'm saying? We talking about writing things down, notebooks. Was your passcode A1 or hot sauce? How you get hacked? <laughs> oh, man. All right, so look, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go back because I ain't trying to create no theory. So this is what I feel like. Cause like, like I said, I'm smart, so I feel like I can pick I up on- I don't know how smart you was, look, Sauce, because look, hear me, they figured hear me your passcode out. Hear me out, it wasn't even that easy. You know what I'm saying? So. I'm gonna go back, back. So it was a situation that happened with like these, this blog, you know what I'm saying? It's these female bloggers or whatever. And they like, they just post athletes or whatever and be like, what's the T on him? And I remember my name came into the conversation. So then I'm just seeing like females just lying. He took me to Paris, he took me to, I'm like, I ain't even got no pass. I ain't even have a passport at the moment. You know what I'm saying? I still haven't been to Paris. I still haven't been out the country till this day. So it's like certain things I just couldn't, I just couldn't get right with it. So then I remember I told one of my teammates, and this kind of when, when me and Miko like kind of fell out of love a little bit. So uh, my teammates, I, I got a couple of teammates that made the blog or whatever. Mm. They told me that one of his close friends, she is the one behind all of it. Like she run a blog. So I tell him, I'm like, bro, you got to tell her to take it down. Ah, ah. You know what I'm saying? He said he was gonna do it. So then he come back to me like, hey bro, I could tell her to do it, but she gonna want a little something. She gonna want some money. So I'm like, that really just threw me off like, cause that's extortion. Yeah. And it's like, you as my teammate, first of all, I never been extorted. Can't like, I don't care if it was a dollar, I'm not paying nobody a dollar to like extort me. That's just like where I come from. That, we don't play about that. So yeah, I remember um, 
he said that. So that's where it sparked a little something. Like, I remember every single day, like, I was just on some different timing because, like, I know that if you really cool with somebody, then you got the power to tell them to take something down and they'll do it. You know what I'm saying? So that's just like a part of it. And then something happened between me and him. He went back to the female and was like, yeah, this causing problems in the locker room. So then it's like, you going back to females, you know what I'm saying? You going back to females, telling them what we got going on in the locker room. So then I remember that blog hit me up and was saying, hey, I, got, I need X amount. So I just started responding. All that died down. So then fast forward to like my Snapchat getting hacked. I don't think they was the ones like that hacked it, but I think they had something to do with it. Cause like whoever hacked it, he like a true hacker. Like he been around for a minute. So I don't know how that, how that happened. But it's like the messages, all of that stuff looked the same when it came to them trying to ask for a certain price. And it's like, if you do that, that's just like a no brainer. I'm not paying you. You know what I'm saying? Cause I know me, I know how I move. So if it's on Snap, like, I know I ain't got nothing too crazy. Like, I'm not recording every single thing going on in my life. You know what I'm saying? I've always been that way. So, shit, I was just like, go ahead, do what y'all got to do. Aside from the potential ransom, it seemed real personal. Like, the message from the hacker and the tweets and stuff, everything yeah. that popped up, it seemed personal. Like, somebody was really, really out to get you. No, nah, it was It was a different type of hack situation where they released these guys' accounts again, but those messages seemed directed and very personal. <laughs> Do you think the same? Yeah, I, I, I definitely agree. Like, I'm saying, it's like whoever hacked the account seemed kind of mad. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. I'm like, if it's a true hacker, they just do it for fun. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They ain't really going to, it ain't going to sound personal. That's just what they do. So I definitely think it was something uh, personal. You know, I still don't know what it is, but I had my, I got my speculations, but. I was gonna say, bro, what they was asking for? Like 20 racks, 200 racks, a meal? Like what, what was the nah, numbers they were talking about? So I think they, they asked for like a hundred. You know what I'm saying? hundred thousand? Yeah. It's one of them things where it's like, they think that I don't know what's on there. So it's like, I know that's probably why they overreach like that. Cause it's like, it's Snapchat. You don't know what you did. But me, the type of person I am, it's like, you're not gonna find nothing OD that's gonna have me like cooked or something, something like up. that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Cause they ain't, I don't move like that. So I wasn't tripping. I was just like, hey, it is what it is. In a situation like that, early on, you mentioned, you know, always being intelligent when it pertained to school, also having a level of street, street smarts. You know what I mean? You from Detroit. Like, you don't make it from where you're from yeah. without having that sort of awareness. How much does that play a part in the way you move though? Because a lot of cats in your position, type of money you have, type of fame you have, the type of success, they live recklessly, right? And if their Snapchat got hacked, they'd pay that money just to not let those so, things get out. How much of your upbringing and certain things you've experienced is what makes you live that way? A lot of it, like, you know what I'm saying? I don't really, I ain't sitting there recording my whole life. Like, people know when they come around me, like, I, I don't need all them cameras in my face. You know what I'm saying? I don't really party like that anyway. Mm -hmm. Like, y'all know me, I be playing the game, streaming and stuff like that. Because I know I ain't got to worry about nothing, nothing. You know what I mean? So, that's how I be. That's just how I always move. You know, uh, in the times if I was to go out, you ain't going to see me dancing or uh, I'm probably like the most boring person to go out with. But it's just like me. All that music and stuff, that just I just be like aware of all my surroundings. You know what I'm saying? My teammates could be all turned, but me, I'm gonna be the one that's, you know, that's chill, that's just looking around, making sure everybody else good. I know that. If that was Chan, Snapchat, he'd have been out there butt booty ass naked. Oh yeah, I'm taking my shirt off in the club. Picks, I was talking <laughs> naked <laughs> pics and everything on yeah, Snapchat. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah I'm, I'm taking that shirt off in the club. But what did what did you what did you learn from it? What 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 did this situation? What how did that change salt? Uh, I ain't gonna lie, it just it ain't changed me too too much. Like it ain't like I'm ashamed of nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like everything I got more secure though. Mm. Two factor verification, I got that on on everything. So it ain't really changed me. Like, but I'm you actually said though you've reached a place in success and fame where you can't really have a private life where you can't. You can't really live, I guess, the normal existence. Did you know that before this situation, or was it this situation that made you tweet that and feel that way? Actually, I think I tweeted that before this happened. Okay. Before that happened. 
So it's like I was already knowing. Like, I done had plenty of situations. I done been by myself. Or like, when I use, when I travel, I always got security with me. You know what I'm saying? But it's just like, you can just be out eating with your peoples. You know, you got people trying to come up to you, taking pictures. It's never really private, even if you want it to be private. So I feel like since my name been growing even more, it's like more of that, mm -hmm. you know, cause I feel like the amount of people who know me from year one to now is crazy. And it's crazy cause I thought a lot of people knew me last year, but it's like now it's, it's even more crazy. Even in Vegas, everybody was coming up to me. I'm like, this Vegas, it's always people with big names here. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, it's definitely changing, but you know, that's what, that's what come with it. You mentioned how the situation during the season sort of caused a rift between you and McCole. Like, I get it, you know what it is. Like, if you're my teammate, you're supposed to have my back. You understand that these things are happening. If I know Chan and I know, if I know Fred and I know Chan, and Chan's like, hey man, me and Fred has this issue, have this issue, I'm going to try to be the go-between yeah. and get things fixed. That's the way it works. Yeah. Uh, we had McCole on our show and you know, he said some things about your team, the Jets, and uh, Thomas Morstead spoke out and said something about uh, you know getting beat out by an undrafted rookie. And you know, you also you know there was some jokes you made, playbooks being leaked or calls being leaked. When you started to hear those things, how much of those feelings from the season? sort of rose up and made you think that it's possible that a person like that could do some of those things. Y'all know it's like a difference between like this podcast and the first one. Like the first one, I really get in the room, I don't really like talking too much because I like to fill everybody out. You know what I'm saying? So when I first met Miko, I think it was in Cali, the first thing I thought is like he talk a lot. You know what I'm saying? So I really wasn't surprised by like him getting on the podcast and just talking about everything. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just talking the way he talk. Cause if you ask me, it looked like he was just happy to be there. You know, and it looked like he just made y'all job easier because y'all just asked questions and he's just sitting there talking the whole time, which is fine. Um, Cause he did ball out. He balled out in the Super Bowl. He had a Super Bowl uh, game when the catch and he won, a, he won the Super Bowl. Now I'm happy for him, uh, you know, for being able to make that happen. But you got to think, I've really, but like, you can't really discredit the Jets, especially him individually. Like, they sent you to a contender team. You know what I'm saying? They sent you back to the Chiefs and you just won the Super Bowl. So like, I feel like that's, that's ungrateful. And I feel like he shouldn't have got on there talking about the Jets because he could have just took the high road. You won the Super Bowl and you got had the game win a catch. The standard, I know he, he spoke some good things about the defense, but like, the standard is the standard. Everybody got to follow the standard. If the offense can't make certain things happen, it, that has nothing to do with the standard. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, they just couldn't make it happen for whatever reason. You know, we had some missing pieces or whatever. And um, yeah, like I said, Coach Salah do a great job implementing the standard. You know, offense, defense, special teams, it's not no ego-driven program. Right. Aaron, yeah, he there, but Aaron, Aaron work his butt off, you know, mm -hmm. day in and day out. And I know he mentioned uh, like, helmets being on the ground. We don't really have helmets on the ground. And I know if it was Elmer's on the ground, his was one of them, one of the ones that's on the ground. If you really know what it is, what it takes to win, let me just put you out here. If you know what it takes to win, you know what I'm saying, you gonna make sure you let the team know. We always around each other. We always in the locker room having fun. We always in the meetings. We always talking to each other after practice. But the reason he couldn't do that is because he never earned his stripes. He came in the facility and just thought he had a made for him, like. If you know what it takes to win, you're not gonna go to practice and drop hella punts and then have excuses to why you're dropping them. You know, you're not gonna go in a special teams meeting and get cussed out by the uh, special team uh, coordinator. Like, it's just certain things that's not gonna happen if you truly know what it takes to win. So I feel like it's always two sides to it. And I'm a realist, so I'm gonna always keep it 100. Like I said, I'm gonna keep it 100 with that. Like I said, I'm actually proud of him for being able to go there and make those plays like late in the season, you know, cause he, I'm sure when he came to the Jets, he wasn't expecting to go back to Kansas City at the, the same year or whatever. You know what I mean? So I'm proud of him for being able to win the Super Bowl. I'm proud of him for being able to, you know, make that catch to, to uh, end the game. You are, just to be honest, um, I told you this when I met you at last year's Pro Bowl. For someone who is as successful as you are, the 
absolute zero amount of hate you have in your heart for people is refreshing. Yeah. Yeah. Like I've listened to you talk about players at your position. I've listened yeah. to you talk about teammates, guys on other teams. And so first of all, I want to say that um, just and even in that answer, you display that. Like oh, yeah, you sure. defended your team and you talked about your team. You talked about some things that you felt were real with him. But you also said, I'm also happy that you got to go do what you did. And so just from a respect level, it just my respect for you continues to rise. I will say this about McCole. He definitely was comfortable in talking to us, which I think a lot of people are like, you're a little different. Like I can tell you right now, 15 minutes through this one, you're way more open than you were the last time. Yeah, so. You know, I can tell that, that, that that's a difference. I think for him too, it was part of that relief of like, I had that start to the season yeah. and look how I finished. Yeah. You know, from our standpoint, I, I take some accountability. I could have, phrase questions the different ways. I could have redirected him different ways and I got to do a better job in that for sure. But I just wanted to give you your flowers on the way you approach everything, bro. It is absolutely phenomenal. Regardless of, you know, what McCole said, whether it's true or not, like we weren't in the locker room and we're talking about standard. Uh, he's a guy who's come from a, a program or organization where he's yeah. played in what, four? or five a Super, Bowls Super Bowls or something like that. And he it's a comparison thing for him, right. right? But you guys now have an opportunity, the words are out there, whether it's bulletin board or whatever it might be, you guys have an opportunity to kind of reassess and reevaluate yourselves in the off season, who are our captains, like the coaches. Yeah. They gotta say, all right, he said it for a reason. Yeah, You know what I'm saying? He was here, he peeked around, he said it for a reason. How do you guys as the leaders, how do you, as the leader of the team, uh, all pro, uh, pro bowl, how do you take that step forward to say, all right, this is out there. Maybe we need to look at things a little bit differently and use this approach. How do you go for it? Do you do anything differently? I mean, you got to think, even if it's, if it wasn't true, you still going to look at it like, all right, it's out there. Let's make sure we tighten up every end. You know what I'm saying? It's some good that we can take from what he said, um, without a doubt, but, you know, like I said, some of the stuff, it just caught me off guard, but definitely we going to uh, make sure we tie up every end. And uh, to pivot back on what you said, I don't ever hate on nobody, bro. Like, yeah. I come from humble beginnings, you know, so I was always the type of person that want to see everybody eat. I was always the type of person that want to see everybody succeed. Like, I even saw Miko. I saw Miko at the, um, the All-Star game in Indy. You know, I ain't had no hate towards him. I was watching him play, you feel me? I was course high, watching the All-Star game, you feel me? Watching, watching him play. But it's just like, in the season when that happened, that's when I was like a different type of person. Not a different person, but I was feeling a different type of way. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I know, like, if I know a female and she running like a blog, I know, like, she gonna listen to me if we just friends. So that's, that was my mind, that was my mentality, my mindset back then. But all that's over with, I ain't got no hate towards him. I don't got no hate towards nobody in the league, nobody in general. Because I feel like, first of all, when you ain't worried about the next man, that's help you with mental clarity. You know what I'm saying? It help you put some positivity. And I'd have been in a room with, like, Stingley, with Pastor Tan. We always chopping it up. We always picking each other's brains. So it's like, it ain't no reason to, like, hate on the next man. And... The fans and the fan base, they always gonna try to paint that picture. Yeah. And even the, um, the media, they always gonna talk about how do you feel about so and so? Do you think you're, and it's like, they don't always gotta be that. Cause at the end of the day, we gotta line up against these other dudes on the offensive side of the ball. You know, so that's why we always can help each other. So we got the best foot, uh, for when we going against these Tyreek Hills of the world and these, uh, elite receivers. Well, first of all, you did kind of hate on Micah in the All-Star game, say he was why Kai Stanat ain't get 10 points, though. Hey, man. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. Like I said, I had front row seats, man, so I already I seen what was going on. Micah, had a, he, had a, he had a goal that he wanted. And I had got there a little late, so I didn't know exactly what was going on. He like, dang, I almost got 40. And I could just tell by how he was playing, he ain't care about nobody else, you feel me? He was trying to get 40. So then I'm, I'm just watching Kai because I rock with Kai Heavy. You know, that's my dog. I done linked with him uh, plenty of times. 
he my age, you know, and he hilarious. Right. Um, so yeah, I respect everything he do. I'm just watching Kai doing jumping jacks on the court. You feel me? And I'm like, oh no, he wide open. You know what I'm saying? Right. Micah still shooting the ball, air ball, and he ain't even care. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, man, he tripping. Yeah, Kai, Kai said my wife tried to holler at him on one of his videos. I had, yeah, yeah. How you feel about that? I, I responded to him. We went back and forth on social because okay. I was like, yeah, man, I'm a Ferrari. You a moped. Why would she leave a Ferrari to go okay. to a moped? Okay. But one of the reasons, honestly, like RC kind of hit on it. One of the reasons why I think this show is so successful is because it's alpha males sitting down together. Yeah. You can agree, disagree, but it ain't no, like you're saying, it ain't no hard feelings. Like, I think this way, I think this way. Yeah. Okay, cool, bro, respect. Like, yeah. we, we don't gotta agree, we can uh, yeah. respectfully disagree. Sure. But as men, like RC said, and we've had tough conversation between us three too, did you really have a grown man sit down conversation with McCole about all the shit going on? No, we did. Cause I'm, the way, the way that I was, like I said, the way that I was mentally, during that situation, it's like, it's kind of how I was, how I used to be like back back in the day, like back then when I was young. Like, I was really hot because I already had my mind made up. I remember walking into a special teams meeting and it's like, I feel like you could tell when somebody talking about something still. So I done sat down and I done turned around. I just see him like, the hand signal, he talking to somebody else. And I remember I got up, went over there, you know what I'm saying? Then it's like, right, bro, it's just wasting my time. Let me chill out. I ain't gonna gain nothing from this. Let me relax. But we never had a sit down conversation or nothing like that. You know, I wouldn't be opposed to doing it. No. Like I said, I ain't one of those type of people. Like, once I'm cool, once my mind is at ease, and not like 99% of the chance, a percent of the time, I'm, my mind always at, at ease. I always got a great uh, mental space, thinking space, all of that stuff. So I wouldn't mind doing it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But in, at that point, like, it wasn't no telling me, like, to do that. You know what I'm saying? But I think that's, I think that's smart. Like, I've, you know, we saw, we've seen hard knocks. Like, we've seen you get into it with people. You've talked about the way you grew up. Like, from a leadership standpoint, to say this isn't the time for that conversation is intelligent and mature on your point, yeah. on your part. Yeah. Right? Because, like, I know when I walk over to somebody, the sort of energy I'm on, exactly. right? Sometimes I walk over and I was like, I hope he says something exactly. that I can click out about, right? Like that's the mood I, I'm in. And then sometimes I'm like, nah, I really want to hear you out and fix this. And so I think for you to be, be able to understand your headspace and move accordingly, again, just says a lot about you. But for me, that's crazy, Sauce, that you have some of these things going on in your second season, and you became the first player since the 1970 merger to be all pro first team two yeah. years in a row to start your career. I think it was something like, what, 251 total yards, yards or something like that on PFF giving up. When you look at your rookie season, where your defensive rookie year compared to this year, how do and where do you think you've improved? I would probably say, are we talking like on the field or like? Just period, because I think the, I started with the leadership part because I believe that's a large yeah. part of growth sure. as well. For sure, I would, I would definitely say the leadership part, like I'm one of those guys, like I don't never get complacent. I'm not a guy that you about to see be like, all right, yeah, I'm only taking a few reps at practice. I'm literally doing this because I'm trying to get better and I'm trying to help motivate too. You know what I'm saying? I know I was the number four pick. I know I got the all pros or whatever. So it's like me, I try to attack every day like it was my first year. Because I wouldn't even start when we first was in training camp. I would I was behind uh, I was behind Bryce Hall or Dominic Corner as well. You know, he'd be doing his thing and we didn't seen at the times he had to go in there and play. Denver, um yep. and Philly. You know, he got a pick, scoop, score, fumble. So, you know, just being able to just watch him and watch how he attack, attack the uh, day every day, like, he motivated me. And that's one thing about me, man, like, I'm saying I always, my ears are always open. You know, I'm always trying to listen and be able to get more pointers, whether it's from the coaches, whether it's from my teammates, no matter who it is, whether it's, I'm sure it could be the lunch lady, it don't matter who it is, I'm, I'm always trying to find ways to get better. You know, that's why the way I move, when I go in there to get my meals in a, in a cab, I'm always, you know what I'm saying? Like memorizing names, you know, mm -hmm. telling them thank you for the food and stuff like that. Like I just been trying to mature even more. 
You know what I'm saying? And um, yeah, back to like the the Miko thing. It's like I didn't come into the league to just like be on that type of time. You know what I'm saying? Be getting into it with people, be arguing with people. We all came in for whatever our own reasons is. Me, Miko, and the rest of the people in the league. And I know Miko, he had uh, plenty of reasons why he wanted to, you know, come to the league and dominate and show the world what he can do. You know, and I know one of those reasons wasn't to be arguing with me or arguing with other people. So, you know, we gonna grow from it, and you know, we always gonna own in on our on our why and why we why we uh, play this game that we love to play. You ever look at your stats and say, "God damn, I'm good as hell." <laughs> <laughs> I'm locking folks. Up. Crazy, <laughs> bro. Nah, I, I really don't because um, you know, I really I, I love the game, man. I love the game so much. And I love what the game can do for like my family, you know. It's like I be I, I keep seeing videos resurfacing of me when I was real, real young. And it's like, if you ask any individual, you wouldn't expect me to be where I am today. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? College, high school, little, little league, possibly, because I, I was a man in little league. You know what I'm saying? I was a man in Great little boy. league. When I got to high school, I was still hella small. Like I was like 5'8, 130, like ninth grade. So like you couldn't really look at me and be like, all right, yeah, he gonna be a cornerback starting the league, this, this, and that, you know. But like I don't really be looking at my stats like that, you know. Sometimes it's like I can't, I can't help but to see them because they pop up on Twitter. And it's always there. You look at your Madden rating. Hey, I do look at my Madden rating. What's your Madden? What's your Madden rating? I heard I, I haven't 96? been playing Madden. I heard they took it to a 96. You know what I'm what? saying? That's crazy. <laughs> As a gamer, how dope is that though, man? To see yourself on Madden. To have that sort of rating, you know, for someone who actually enjoys stuff like that. We keep it 100, so. I mean, it's cool. Like, it's mad pro players who be getting me for their ultimate team and stuff like that. And I remember before I got drafted, I said I had stopped playing Madden in college. I was like, I'm not going to play until I get in the game. And it's like, whenever I actually get on Madden, I feel a certain type of way seeing myself. I be like, bro. <laughs> I'm really on the game. So that's why, that's probably like 70% of the reason why I don't be on Madden, because I'm on there. But it's not like a bad reason, it's just like, it always make reality, reality hit again and make me get to thinking about myself when I was young. Like, hey, bro, I'm really on Madden, I'm really a 96 overall, I'm really this, I'm really that. You know what I'm saying? So that's like the main reason I don't be on there. Bro, we saw it, and I go back in mind, we older than you. I saw it with Dion. I saw it with Champ Bailey. I saw it with Revis for that little stretch. And now your ass. Like, when you know the quarterback looks over there before pre-snap. Hell with that. Nope. <laughs> Does nah. that shit get frustrating? I mean, it do get frustrating, but like, I play between the lines. So whenever I get a chance to like take it out on the receiver, that's what I do. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I get him the extra push or whatever, like whatever it is. But it definitely get frustrating. You know, I, I had some opportunities to get some interceptions this past year. And that's what makes it so frustrating. Like, I wish I could have made the most out of those opportunities that I got because I, I didn't get a lot. I want to ask you about that. Uh, early on in the season, you guys were playing Dallas. Yeah. Uh, you lock down outside. Dak kind of throws it across the field. And that's early on in the game, too, yeah. where you have an opportunity to not only be the difference maker you always are, you change the circumstance yeah. of the team. Yeah. When you have those sorts of moments, because you said earlier, you're always seeking to get better. You're always seeking to reach a higher standard. How frustrating are things like that? And how did you feel Man. like right then, right there? I was so frustrated. And I was making excuses. Because it's like, I remember my, my visor was blurry, but, but I, see, I still seen the ball. It's like, if y'all peep, I haven't, I haven't worn a visor. Like I never, I haven't, I didn't wear a visor for the rest of the season. You know what I mean? Because I was contemplating. It's crazy. I was contemplating on taking it off. I'm like, buddy, y'all see my visor? It's crazy. They like, cause we in the dome. That's how it is. Next thing you know, that outcome. Like, damn. You know what I'm saying? It's definitely frustrating. Because I could have changed that game. You know what I'm saying? I still think about that. I could have changed that game. Um, pick six, we would have been back in it, but. You know, they, they just had the momentum the entire time. You know what I'm saying? So, it's stuff like that that I wish I could get back. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'd be lying if I said um, 
I didn't feel that way, you know? I think, I think last time we saw you, we asked you your GOAT receivers, like uh, former players. Do you mind if I ask you your top five receivers in the game? Right now? Or the guys you, you like to go against? Um, so I got Tyreek. This is not in order right here. Tyreek, Justin Jefferson, Devontae Adams. I want to say somebody maybe, but he ain't put me in his top five, so I ain't even saying him. <laughs> well, 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 who, who, well, who, make him an honorable mention then. Who, who would it be? Uh, I'll make him an honorable mention. All right, so that's the three right there. Um, you know who I like, though, who really like that? Who's that? Amari Cooper. Yeah, he like yeah. that. Uh, Amari Cooper. Cooper. He like that. He, like, yeah. he don't be in the top fives, though. People don't really put him in their top fives. Maybe because he's a little older, older than those guys, but Coop, Coop, Coop been crazy this year, too. That's what I'm yeah. saying. All right, you at four. All right. Um, I feel like I'm missing something. Oh, CD. I ain't even saying CD. Yeah. Tyree, okay, Tyree. Jesse Jefferson, CD. Um, Amari. Coop. Coop. Devontae. Devontae. Okay. No, that's a that's a, a great one. Honorable mention, Stephon Diggs. Oh, because he did. <laughs> Honorable mention, Stephon Diggs. I was just about to say, Aiden, 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 Aiden got at you, <laughs> Lil Aiden, his little nephew, said, oh, he uh, did, he did get Pro at Bowl. me. Hey, nah, he, he is hilarious. I feel like, I mean, I feel like he going to be a baller when it comes to football. Yeah. But he can mess around and have acting in his career, too. Like, Man, he can have his own little TV show. Right he, he he hilarious for sure. Yeah, he got he got that that digs uh, sort of entertainment gene. You know, Freddie T asked you about the top five receivers, bro. Your class of corners has turned out to be yeah. an amazing class. Yep. Uh, we all knew about you and Sting. You guys go three, yep. four. Trent McDuffie, yeah, absolutely you know, went crazy. You know. Had a great Super Bowl. Uh, Deron Bland, mm -hmm. uh, Tariq. You know, just so many of you guys, like when you look at that young, that that actual class of DBs, I think a lot of people still feel you stand at the top of it. How fun is it to play with those guys, know those guys, rock with them, but also get to compete amongst a great group of peers for the years to come? I mean, it's great. I feel like um, soon, whether it's this offseason, next offseason, or the one after that, like we gonna have to all get together. Like, I feel like that'd be good for, for the culture. Like we could start something special. You know what I'm saying? Us training. I mean the next the next group of corners and the next draft class, they can get together. I feel like receivers, they train more together than us as DBs. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the hidden secret is, hidden reason why us as DBs don't be together. Like some of the top guys. You know what I mean, those guys that you just named in, in, in our class, some of the top guys, like, we could be learning stuff from the older guys. I know Slay, Slay always willing to uh, get some game, free game, you know, drop some knowledge. He one of those guys, but there's other guys in the, there's other guys in the league too, you know what I'm saying? I know Jalen that put me hip to a lot of stuff, you know what I'm saying, whenever I ask. But, but like, we, it's probably some stuff that we don't know, you know, some stuff that I don't know that they know, right. vice versa, you know? I have a question. Um, what is your relationship with Kaylin King? Okay, so Kaylin, we got a pretty good relationship. Um, he used to always be hitting me in college. We used to play the game when okay when he was in Penn like, State corner. Yeah, was coming out to the draft when he was in college. I think I was in college. Yeah, because you only been in the league yeah, two years. Yeah, yeah. So we used to always be playing two K and everything like that. And it's like um, I used to watch him at Penn State. He used to be a baller, and then I seen. Um, it's 40, and it's like he looked a little bit nervous. And it's like, I was feeling the same way. I know y'all probably seen the tweet. Yeah, I was feeling the same way. I was, feeling, I was feeling hella nervous when I was when I was at the combine. It was kind of like uncomfortable type nervous. Like, why is it so quiet in here? It's, it's hella people in, in, in this right. stadium, and it's hella quiet. And it's like, you can just look up. You see everybody looking at you. Then it's like you get down for your 40, you look up, everybody is like around that area right there, that strip. And I remember my first 40, all my technique went out the window. First of all, my I could not learn to start when it came to running the 40. Like, I know when your hand down, you gotta, they want you to swing it straight back. Yep. But if you lift it up first and then put it back, you look, you already lost yeah. time. Yeah. So like even, even on my second 40, I did the same thing. I still just ran faster. You know, so I feel like. A huge part of it is technique for sure. But yeah, man, 
I seen that, and it's like I already know he fast. I know the type of guy that he is. I know the type of player he is, and I know the type of dog he got in him. You know, he from Detroit. Yeah. You know me, anybody from Detroit, I'm always going to feel like I already know like where they coming from. You know what I'm saying? So I already know he feel like he can go up and match up against anybody, which is the main thing. The main thing is how you perform on Sundays or Thursdays, Mondays, you know, so. I yeah. thought that just, you know, to to do it publicly is huge for a kid like that or for a young man like that who's going through that. Like you say, he because he can actually really play. Right. Right. He's going to be one of the higher drafted corners and then you do run four or six and the first thing goes through your mind is I've ruined it all. Yeah. You know, so to have you reach out to him when I'm sure people are probably dogging him or he's down on himself is big for his confidence. Definitely. And bro, I gotta ask you, like you said, number four pick, second year, two time all pro, team leader. And y'all were in the talks of winning the Super Bowl yeah. early in the year. And we was all watching it. Week yeah. one, we knew what happened. We was all watching the world was yeah. watching. It's crazy. Clay Fuller. A-Rod get back there, he try to push off, and then he sit down. He don't do all the wiggling on the ground. Right. He just sit down and he's shaking his head. Man. You as a team leader, like at that moment, how did you feel? And then you as a team leader, y'all got to get up the next day because y'all still got 16 left for the regular season. Shoot, they had to get out the next series. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you still, you had to do that. Like what, what was your part in, how did you feel at that moment? What was your part in that? Because, man, that was, a, that was a hit to the football world. Like you said, he wasn't doing all the squirming around and all of that. So I'm thinking, like, he probably just twisted his ankle or something like that, rolled his ankle. You know, but once I heard the actual news, I'm like, bro, like, what are we going to do? You know what I'm saying? We had the whole, whole offseason, hard knocks, all that going on. And it's like, damn, we ain't got A-Rod. You know what I'm saying? We ain't got eight out there. We ain't going to have him out there no more. So I was definitely hurt, but... The way our defense is, the way our brotherhood and bond is, it's like we always going to think, all right, bet. Now we got to do it for him. You know what I'm saying? So it was really easy to be able to go out there and be motivated to play for him. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to see nobody get hurt. Like, you don't never want to see that happen to nobody. You know what I'm saying? The same thing with, um, what's his name from the Niners? Dre, uh, Dre Greenlaw. 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 There's stuff like that is just... Like, you don't ever want to see stuff like that. Right. You know, you want people to always be able to be available to be able to play the game that they love. So things like that is, is just hard. It's just hard to, hard to take, you know what I'm saying? You know, he's back, right? You yeah. expect to have Aaron Rodgers healthy. I mean, he was working yeah. his way trying to get back if you guys made the playoffs. And yeah. so for y'all, last year was, okay, let's try to get some new players in. Let's get this new quarterback in. We have a Super Bowl caliber defense. Right. We know who we are. This offseason is a little different. What's your focus and the team's focus this offseason headed into 2024? What do you want to happen going forward and what do you feel like you need to do? I mean, I know LaSauce been uh, oh, on the job. Yeah. LaSauce the recruiter. Yeah, man. I feel like we got a couple pieces, you know, that we want to get, you know, but the main thing is just locking that brotherhood in, getting everybody on, on board. You know what I'm saying? If we all on the same page, we good. You know what I'm saying? That's one thing Miko did t say that was true. Like, when Aaron went down, it's like, when Aaron, I'm going to just say it like this. When Aaron was on the field, everybody felt confident in, in their ability, you know, whatever position they was. Like, yeah, you had Garrett. Garrett always going to do his thing. Brees always going to do their thing. You know, I'm talking about them because I know that they was in the same draft class as me, and I already know them. You know what I'm saying? But it's like when he on that field, everybody want to block for him. Everybody want to catch the ball for him. Everybody want to do that. And it's like, you know, once he, once he wasn't there no more, it's just it's certain things that, like, we, some people, like, relented a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's just the reality of the things. Yeah, I mean, whenever you have a dude like that at quarterback, the belief in the building is different. You know, yeah. I mean, when you mentioned the name Aaron Rodgers, it's always going to be mentioned with the best to ever do it. He for is sure. in those conversations with the Patrick Mahomes when we talk about right. skill level, the Josh Allens, the big time guys in his league and him even more so with some of the things that he's accomplished. So when you look at who the Jets are going to be this season, now I want you to put your recruiter hat on, right? Because you know in the offseason, LaSauce, yeah. a Buffalo Wild Wings yeah. uh, 
a Buffalo Wild Wings um, fame, yeah. gets to recruiting in this offseason, what are some of his recruiting wishes if he can make some things come true? I want Aaron to be protected back there. I want him to feel comfortable back there in that pocket. You know, and um, it's really simple. Like, I want him to feel comfortable in the pocket, and I want uh, Garrett to not have to get double team. So if that means bringing another guy in for A to be able to throw to, you know, then that's what it's going to be. But it got to be that much of a threat to the point where it's like, all right, we can't just double team him. If we double team him, we got to double team both of them. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Well, last year it was just double team him, coach. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Exactly. That was it. Channing said, um, two-time All-Pro, two-time Pro Bowler, All-World all Everything. You're a seasoned vet. Random question. What's more, most important, the seasoning or the sauce? On the chicken wings? Well, yeah, like what are we talking about? <laughs> That's some bullshit, man. Okay. I, my mind works okay. stupid sometimes. I mean, I, because you can't have... <laughs> so I'm going to be I honest. I know his goddamn voice was I'm deep in that commercial. <laughs> Rubbing the pouncer. <laughs> Rubbing the pouncer. <laughs> yeah. God damn! Yeah. The, the seasoning or the sauce? Like, so I'm going to be honest. Like, you know, it'll be easy for me to say the sauce, you know? That's my name or whatever. But it's like, you know, sometimes the seasoning just right, you don't even need no sauce. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You don't even need no sauce. So I'll say the seasoning for sure. Got to be. I love it. You know what? I was about to say myself, but I think I'm, I'm going to put y'all in there too. Sauce is better at football than we were. Yeah. yeah. He's the best football player in this room right now. No I mean, doubt. He, these are the only two that can even have a conversation. Like, all part of that conversation. Yeah, we know. need to get on this one goddamn balcony somewhere yeah. and walk away. If this conversation starts. But to, to, to yeah. RC's point, like you talking about, and little sauce, like you say, you on your recruiting tip, or you know, yeah. do the do you go to the organization and be like, because you know these dudes, it's, it was different. I speak myself. Like I knew a whole bunch of dudes in the league, but it ain't like I'm going to the Dolphins and being like, hey man. My homeboy in San Francisco was a free agent. Do you, do, do y'all young boy, do y'all go to the organization and talk to him about that? Oh yeah, I done, I done did that before. You know what I'm saying? I done definitely did that before. I remember one of my boys, I ain't gonna say no name because I don't know like where he at right now or what he got going on. He about to be a free agent. He was like, yeah, I know y'all need a, um, I know y'all need an extra tackle. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So then I just said, I, I said that, you know? <laughs> but I didn't say it to like after because we, we had lost. So like I, I wasn't going straight to to him like, yeah. I you go right him. to Joe or? I went to Salah right there. Joe would hit me up sometimes. It's like, it depends who it is. Like if it's a receiver, he'd be like, hey, how did you feel about him? Like, did he give you problems? I'm like, it depends who it is. Cause sometimes it's like, watch the tape, do it look like he gave me problems. Mm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. It really depends on who it is, but um, yeah. Because he he know that us as players have a different relationship than a player in the gym. So like we know the actual person. Jody, he do a great job at, at bringing in the right person and the right man. You know what I'm saying? So that's the main thing. Um, you want Deion Dawkins? I know y'all friends, no? Oh, no. Nah. You, you say, I saw you the other I day. Said, you took your, you worked out, took your shirt off, said nah, you about I to go did. do a podcast with your shirt off. I mean, like you know. when, why do you feel that's been the trendy thing, though, to knock the Jets? When Deion Dawkins goes on this show, obviously, he never wears a shirt. He didn't have a shirt on at the ESPYs, actually. And he's like, you know, those guys are weirdos or, or those things. Why do you feel it's become trendy to knock the Jets? I don't really know. I, I would have been perfectly fine with the interview if... If he just said, I hate the Jets, I swear I wouldn't have said nothing. I wouldn't have even responded. Like, I still shouldn't have responded. Cause That's about to ask. Why, why, what made you respond? First of all, like, I'm going to say, like, me personally, I ain't going on Vlad. I got my reasons why I ain't going on Vlad. You know what I'm saying? So it's like it's different to, like, see, like, a current player going on Vlad, first of all. That, that kind of threw me off. When you look at Vlad, you really see more, like, rappers Correct. and stuff like that who didn't got into stuff in their life, or then did this, this, or did that, or then, you know what I'm saying? You ain't really seeing no- It's a different platform. Di- whole different platform. That's why I say, I feel like if he wanted to talk about what he was talking about, he could've just came on here and yeah. caught it a day. Cause like, right. you going on Vlad to talk about a $50 million contract that you just got. You know what I'm saying? Vlad really don't even care about that. Vlad ain't never played football a day in his life probably. You know what I'm saying? And I got, hey, I ain't got no problem with Vlad, but 
Yeah, it's just was kind of weird. Like he's saying, we the guys who just post pictures mm-hmm. on. And then I had seen some on Twitter. He got like 400 pictures on Instagram. <laughs> I'm like, how? Like, how are you saying that? Right. You correct. know what I'm saying? He like people was because you know how the Jets fans get. They be OD sometimes. You know, right. they gonna go find you. You know what I'm saying? If it's oh, he said he we be doing that on Instagram. Let me find his Instagram. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking at him. I'm looking at the little pictures on Twitter that they didn't screenshot from the Instagram. I'm like, man, you saying we be doing that, but you, right. you on your IG tweaking, you? <laughs> but I ain't really, I ain't really tripping because it's like, again, that looked like one of them things where he was just like happy to be there. Like when they brought up Mike Clement, you can't hold on. You can't call him what, he, what you call you like. He called him whatever he called him. But if you know Mike, you know he ain't going for nothing. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. It was just certain things like, come on, bro. You ain't got to try to act tough on Vlad. We get it. That's where the rappers be at. That's what it is. You ain't got to try to act tough on Vlad. You mentioned he always have his shirt off. That's cool, but come on, bro. You ain't got to, you ain't got to act over tough on Vlad. That's just, that's just me how I look at it. I, like when I look at that podcast, it looked like a human being who was happy to be on that podcast. Or happy to be getting an interview from Vlad because that's what we grew up watching some of our rappers being interviewed on. And it looked like you acting over tough. And you ain't even gotta do yeah, all that. Because if you really standing on like what you stand for, stand for, you ain't gonna do all that extra talking on on the interview. You ain't gonna call somebody out their name like that. Come on. Yeah, I, th- I think that's the part that was, you know, I could see having to respond to, but I kind of want to take it away from there. Um, you're in your second year, and uh, you know the great part about being in your second year is you don't have to pay for the rookie party. Mm. Now, Please. what I want to ask is when the when the fourteen thousand dollar bill came out, and you said you could hear your voice, you didn't have to pay it. Did you feel a little sorry for the rookies though, being that you had to do it just last year, last oh, season? Thank you, nah. Thank you, nah. Cause like my rookie dinner, I had a turn rookie dinner. Like I had the vets talking about this is the best rookie dinner I'd had. We did ate dinner, little baby, little baby. We done, I was little baby. I rock with baby heavy. Like that's my dog. You know what I'm saying? So. That's DJ favorite rapper. So DJ like, hey bro, I'm a, he he wanna get a I'm like, you want a picture? Bro, all you gotta do is say that. Tell baby, come on, we they take a picture or whatever, boom. So it's like, at the dinner though, the bets didn't even try to tax me. I swear my bill would have been like ten thousand or like eight thousand. The workers at the food spot was just bringing food out. <laughs> they was bringing platters out that's going for like seven bands a pop. They brought three of them out. Off the rip, right. and I'm just thinking like, oh yeah, this ain't, it ain't really like, right. you know what I'm saying? So that's just like twenty one thousand right there. Wait, <clears throat> that's just on three for three platters. So like that stuff that they just brought out that people didn't that, order. That's what the seafood. That's gotta be the final, seafood. What was the final number? I don't even remember the final number. But look, let me let me tell you. So look, at the end when I when I no, there was like six man's six man's okay. a pop. At the end when I go to look at the tab. And I, I don't never be on no disrespectful junk, like especially to the vets. All, all the vets rock with me because they know I'm solid. You know what I'm saying? I'm always keeping it 100. So I look at the tag. I look over. I say, hey, I ain't going to lie. I ain't paying this. And I wouldn't even know no arrogant type. It was just the principle. <laughs> it came off those platters, and none of the vets ordered the platters. <laughs> so it's like, hey, bro, I, ain't, I, I don't know what y'all want me to tell y'all. Feel me? I ain't paying this. You know what I'm saying? And they could know where I'm coming from because they know I ain't trying to be on no cocky junk or nothing like that. They like, man, why they do that? You know what I'm saying? So they go in with me. The, my bet, our bets, my bets, they went in with me on the uh, on the bill. So I think I ended up, ended up being like eight bands, nine bands. Right. So did you go? So you should have went in on the bill this year. Nah, that was different though, cause like <laughs> this year is stuff that everybody already had ordered. Like everything on the menu was ordered. You know what I'm saying? Preset. So it was, wasn't no extra. Yeah, food it wasn't no extra. Like oh, we we went to a different spot than last than the year I I had went to. You know what I'm saying? I would I would have looked out if, if they would have tried to get over on me, cause I ain't I ain't even gonna watch somebody try to get over on my dogs. Right. You know what I'm saying? Hey, that was just unfortunate. The vest the vest was feeling a little, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, 
Junior Seau ordered two bottles of uh, Louis XIII on the way out and took them home on me. Think about that. Dinner I done. I those going for like five. At that time. At that time. Like, that was like yeah, about seven, seven, seven. bands a piece. Mm. In, in the restaurant, and he got one for the table and poured it up in shots, and he took one in the box home. God rest his soul, Junebug, love him to death. But yeah, man, they just hit us in the head. They ain't got nice with y'all. Look, don't never be too rich to ask for the itemized copy or the bill. Because down yeah. in Miami, you hang out, they give you a table minimum. Because girls, the, bar, the table chicks used to trick us back in the day. <laughs> they give you the itemized, they don't give you the itemized bill. Exactly. They just bring you uh, the ending copy. Exactly. You owe 10 grand. Uh, that's for definitely what? what I did. I did that. I said, I want to know how much it is, it is for each one. That's how I was able to see that them, them uh, what's them cost going for what six minutes. What was on the platters, though? I ain't going to lie. It was something crazy. <laughs> I thought they, I thought they was looking out. I thought it was on a house. He thought it was free. You know he what I'm saying? Like, oh, shit, I ain't got to pay for nothing. I thought it was on a house. <laughs> bro, it's like some steak with like a, bro. Damn, I don't know how to word this. Yeah, they were eating, y'all was eating the Wagyu, this, the A5? Yeah, but it's like the, it was like a, like the steak the was like this, platter. though. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He thought he thought he was getting over. He was like, shoot, these boys eat this. Eat this for the free. <laughs> yeah. I'm good. Six thousand dollars. And it got over. Crazy. It got over on me. You know, headed into year three though, sauce, man. This would be the last one uh, for me. You've had the individual success. You always talk about team. You always talk about winning. What is it gonna take that if we're sitting here at this time next year? What is it going to take for the New York Jets to be a playoff team? Hey, just believing. You know what I'm saying? We're going to make sure the piece is there. Everybody just believing in their ability to be great. You know, we got the leaders that lead by example, and we got the vo vocal leaders as well. You know what I'm saying? So everybody, like the way I came in as a, as a rookie, I was always watching the, the vets. You know what I'm saying? So we get that from the younger guys that come in just watching us lead by example. You know, they all going to fall in the line. You know, they're going to love being the New York Jet. I lied. I have one more question. You know, with what was said on our podcast a couple of weeks ago, it's not just about the players. Do you believe in special teams, offensively and defensively, you guys have not only the players, but the coaching staff to win big in this league? Most definitely. You know, uh, I meant to say that earlier when you said uh, what it's going to look like. Complimentary football, you know, offense, defense, special teams. You know, we got the coaches. We definitely got the coaches to give us a great game plan, make it happen. Aaron. We got the players to go out there and execute. You know, we just got to make it happen. Can I hold your chain for tonight? I don't know your about name is that. Look, I'm going to tell you why. I would, you know, but I can't trust that you're going to come back with it. <laughs> there ain't no chance in hell I'm going to come back. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate you, dog. Uh, Appreciate you. <laughs> yes, sir. Appreciate you, my boy. Yes, sir. Uh. Hold up. Limitless. Take a stomach cap, pinning it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, get me up. Uh, on the mission, get me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. Uh, only vision I can trust. Uh, trust. Uh, limitless. Take a stomach cap, pinning it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Uh, way I'm feeling, get me up. Uh, on the mission, get me up.